In this video, we're going to talk about what we call linear functions. All right. Before we actually get to linear functions, I want to talk about what we call a relation. A, race, a relation is a rule that assigns input values from one set to output values from another set. And basically what I, what I mean by a set is just a group of objects. And of course, we're talking about math here. So in, the objects that are in my sets are going to be numbers. I have two relations. Um, here's a relation here. And here is a relation here. And it's given by this diagram. And notice that I have two circles filled with numbers. That's what I'm calling sets. So here I have a set with 1, 2, and 3 in it. Here I have a set with negative 1, 0, and 1 in it. And I have similar sets here. All right. And so what I want to do is I want to, what I mean, want to go over what I mean by input values and output values. Notice here my arrows are taking. For instance, this one right here, it takes it to this other set and assigns it to negative one. It takes two and assigns it to negative one, and it also takes two and assigns it to zero, and it takes three and assigns it to one. Notice that my, my arrow is going from this set right here to the second set, all right? And that's what I mean by input values. These one, two, and three would be my input values, and my output values would be the negative one, zero, and one. All right. Now this is a relation. All right. It assigns input values to output values. That's the only requirements that I have for um, relations. So both of these. This is a relation, and this diagram here is a relation. All right. Now notice the difference between these two relations here. In this relation to the right, I have one getting assigned to zero. I get two getting assigned to negative one and three getting assigned to one. Right. Input output. The difference here is in the fact that here two gets assigned to not just one number, but it gets assigned to two separate numbers. And that's the difference between something being just a relation and something being a function. Since each of these numbers are these input values in this relation here gets assigned to exactly one output, we're going to be called this a special relation, which is a function. All right. And so this one to the right will be a function. This one is not a function. And it's all because of this two here. It gets assigned to two separate numbers. And so if I want to write a definition of a function, it is a relation for which each input value. And for our purposes, we're going to be using X mainly as our input value gets assigned to one and only one output value. And our output values are our Y values. And so since that happens here and it does not happen here, that one is a function while the other is not a function. Some other terms that we want to know in relation to uh, functions are two terms, domain and range. Your domain is your set of all input values where your function is defined. And so here, um, my input values are one, two, and three. Notice that they are on this side of my arrow. And my range will be the output values, which is negative one, zero, and one. All right. Once we know that something is a function, like when we deal with equations, instead of using the variable y, what we're going to start using is replacing y with f of x. That's an f with the parentheses in, in it. And after it, with x in the parentheses, it's read f of x. That means that this is a function of x and we're going to look at examples where we we see this a little bit more so it won't be so abstract what i want to do is i want to give you a set of ordered pairs right so above up here i gave you a set of numbers in sets and i told you what the input was and i told you what the output was right and so with when we're dealing with ordered pairs we can do the same thing without having that picture all we have to remember is that our x values, our x coordinates are considered our inputs 
and our y coordinates are considered our outputs. And as long as each x value from this definition up here, each x value gets assigned to one and only one y value, then we know we're good and it is a function. All right. And so in this example, I have the ordered pairs 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. And so basically what I want to determine is, hey, well, let me look at all of my X values. And so I mean, you can draw a picture if you want. Um, I have a 2 here as an X value. I have a 1 here. I have a 0. I have a 1. Up, oh, I already wrote 1 right there. And I have a 2 as an X value. Up, oh, I already wrote 2 there. Right. So these are all my inputs. All right. And now what I want to do is make sure that they get assigned to one and only one output. Well, my output for this two is negative two. Right. That first one. The output for this one right here is a negative one. The output for the zero is a zero. Right. That's the Y coordinate. But if I go even further, this is a one and it also gets assigned to one. So not only does it get assigned to negative one, it also gets assigned to positive one. Uh-oh, this one does not get assigned to just one number. It got assigned to two numbers. So I know that this is not a function. All right. Every X value can only have a one Y value. And if you keep going, you would notice that two also gets sent to a positive two. Right. And so that definitely makes sure that this is not a function. So this is only a relation. It is not a function. So each input, remember your X values are your inputs, gets assigned to one and only one output. And that makes something a function. Let's All right. Well, I'll go ahead and tell you that every single linear equation except vertical lines are considered linear functions, all right? And the reason for that is because the definition of a linear function is a function that can be written in the form f of x equals mx plus b. That means that it has a slope, or you can tell what the slope is. Um, if there's a line that has a slope, then it is considered a linear function, all right? Notice that this is very closely related to our y equals mx plus b. But remember I said that when we're dealing with functions, instead of using y, we're going to use f of x. All right. So I do want to remind you that this means that our slope exists. All right. And so the only type of line that we've studied so far that had an undefined slope was vertical lines. All right. And so vertical lines... I said linear. Vertical lines aren't linear functions because they don't have a slope and I cannot write it in that form right there because the slope is undefined. All right. One, one thing we want to do is to evaluate linear functions. And what I mean by evaluate, as I've stated over and over before, is that we want to substitute the value in for the variable and then simplify, right? And this is the way I'll ask you to evaluate a function, all right? I'll say let f of x equals 4x plus 22, and I want you to find the following, f of negative 10. Notice I did not use the word evaluate like I did when we looked at linear expressions. All right. Since I have function notation, if you notice that negative 10, right, normally I will write this as f of x. But now that 10 is in the that negative 10 is in the place of the x. And so since this x is replaced by negative 10, then everywhere I see an x here, I'm going to have to replace it by a negative 10. And so if, if I do that, I'll get the f of negative 10 equals 4 times negative 10 plus 22. Well, that is negative 40 plus 22, and negative 40 plus 22 is negative 18. All right, so f of negative 10 is negative 18. That's evaluating, and that's using what your knowledge of what an input means, all right? And so here we're in using our input, that negative 10 for x, okay? All right. 
Not only can we evaluate linear functions, but we can create a linear function if we know certain characteristics of that linear function. For example, in this example, I want to create a linear function whose graph has a slope of one half and a y-intercept at zero two thirds. Well, remember, if I'm going to create a linear function, I've got to know the form of the linear function. And the form of a linear function is f of x equals mx plus b. All right. Well, as long as I can find my m, which they give us here, and my b, which they give us here, then I'll have the, all the information I need to create that linear function. And so my linear function that has a slope of one half is f of x equals one half x, and that goes through that that y intercept, one half x plus two thirds. All right. So this is very similar to when we were just looking at y equals mx plus b, but now. Instead of writing y, we're going to have f of x. f of x is now in the place of y. It's just letting us know that this special equation here is actually a function. All right? And because it is a function, it's going to be special because if I, for every input, I'm only going to get one and only one output. So that's what makes functions very special for us. All right? What I want to do now is I want to graph... A linear function and from the graph I want to be able to determine the domain and the range of that function all right and so I'm going to look at this example here I have f of x equals two-thirds x plus two all right well if I look at this for me to graph it I can use my slope and my y-intercept all right so my m is two-thirds and my y-intercept is two all right, if you want to write it as the point zero two, that is perfectly fine. Fine. All right. And so as we stated before, if you want to find this, uh, graph this using the slope and the y-intercept, start by graphing your y-intercept. So for my origin, I want to go up two, plot that point. And then I have my rise over my run here. That means I'm going to go up two units and then to the right three units. And so if I go up two units and to the right three units, up one, two, to the right three, I have this point right here. All right, again, again, up one, two, to the right, one, two, three, and I have that point there. And so what I've done was I've graphed, connect this with a straight line, and I'm going to do a thick line so that it actually looks right. Instead of looking... And it still looks a little, it's okay. All right, and so I've graphed my line, and now what I want to do is I want to find a domain, and I want to find the range. And anytime I write the domain and the range, I'm going to use interval notation, all right? And remember, interval notation, we use that when we were dealing with inequalities, all right? And But we're always going to use it when we are looking for domain and range. Now this may be a little difficult to look at, so let's let's take our time and look at this together. When I'm thinking domain, I'm and I'm looking at a graph, the thing that I'm thinking about most is okay, what are all the x coordinates to every single point on that line? All right? What are the x coordinates to every single point on that line? For instance, this point right here is on this line right here, right? It has an x coordinate of negative 2. That means my function is defined at x equals negative 2. That's an input value. That's an x coordinate input value. That's in my domain. All right. Let me just, I'm just going to pick another point. Let's say this point right here. It has an x coordinate of negative 1. So not only is negative 2 in my domain, negative 1 is also in my domain. Well, let's look at this point right here 0. Right? That has an x coordinate of 0. That's in my domain. And not only that, but if I choose all the points between those numbers, all the x coordinates from negative 2 to 0 are in my domain. And I can continue to do this for every single point on my graph. They're going to have all of these x coordinates on my x axis. When that happens, when my entire x axis is, is my domain, that means all real numbers is my domain. And anytime we use all real numbers, that's going to be from negative infinity 
to positive infinity. And notice that these arrows continue, right? So my domain isn't going to stop at 11 right here. It's not going to stop at 11 right here. It's going to continue because my graph is going to continue up here. That's what the arrows mean. Same thing happens here. At negative 11, my graph is not going to stop. These arrows here means that my graph is going to continue, continue, continue. And so I have to use from negative infinity to positive infinity so that I'll have make sure I get all of my values in my domain. All right. Now let's go to range. So we've got that our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And now what we want to do is go to our range, right? And remember, domain is with respect to your x-axis. Range is, is with respect to your y-axis, all right? So I'm going to go back to my graph, and I'm going to do that whole process over again, but now I'm going to be looking at my y-coordinates. So I'm going to start with this point once again. That point has a y-coordinate. It looks like at 1, right? This point here... Looks like it has a y coordinate at, well, let's go to this point here. It has a y coordinate at 2. Notice that all the points in between there, all right, from net, from 1 to 2 are still in my domain, are, are, are still part of my graph, part of that line there. If I go to this point here, that has a y value of 4. And if I connect those points, every single y value from 1 to 4 has is a y coordinate on this part of my graph here and i can continue all the way up here to include all of these y values here and i can continue all the way down here to include these y values below and if you notice again your entire y axis and it's going to continue because you got you have these arrows here your entire y axis inc would include points that are y coordinates on your line. And so that means, once again, your domain, sorry, we're talking about range here, is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity, which means all real numbers. All right. And this concludes what we want to do with functions. Um, but before I end this video, I want to look at an application example of where we use functions. Okay. It says a Celsius temperature can be converted to Fahrenheit by multiplying it by nine fifths and then adding 32. All right. So we got a Celsius temperature. We want to convert it to Fahrenheit. And you do that by taking that Celsius temperature, multiply it by nine fifths and add 32 to it. OK, so it tells us explicitly what we need to do in order to convert. So part A here says create a function capital F of X that converts a Celsius temperature X to a Fahrenheit temperature. Well, notice my function is going to be called capital F of X. Notice my Celsius temperature is X. So I'm going to take X, right? So a Celsius temperature can be converted to Fahrenheit by taking it. Well, it is X now. So taking X, multiplying X by nine fifths and adding 32 to it. So I get 9 fifths multiplying by my Celsius temperature and add 32 to that and that will convert my Celsius temperature into a Fahrenheit temperature. All right. So that is my function. F of X equals 9 fifths X plus 32. Now what I want to do is go to part B. It says use the function F of X from part A to calculate or convert the following Celsius temperatures to Fahrenheit temperatures. All right, and so I'm going to take zero degrees Fahrenheit and I want to change that or convert that to a Celsius temperature. All right, well, all I have to do is evaluate that function at zero. So I'm going to define F of zero, put the Celsius temperature into your function. You get nine fifths times zero plus 32. Well, 9 fifths times 0 is 0, so you get 0 plus 32, and so we get 32, and that's going to be degrees Fahrenheit, okay? All right, and the second example, we want to take 100 degrees Celsius and convert that to uh, Fahrenheit, all right? And so I'm going to have F of 100. 
equals, well, let's go ahead and put 100 in for x into our Fahrenheit here. So that'll be 9 fifths times 100 plus 32. All right, and if you don't have a calculator, right, 5 goes into 120 times. And so 9 times 120 is 180 plus 32. And 180 plus 32 is 212, and that would be degrees Fahrenheit. All right? And so this concludes our video on functions.